You're going to Hall H? Yep. That way? Yep. All right, I'm going this way. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have fun. Okay. So today I've broken off from the group. I'm headed to Hall H to see if I can get in. There's a couple panels. We got Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight, uh, Legendary Pictures, which hopefully will have Guillermo del Toro, and uh, a few others there. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, meet up with Daniel, who I think is already in line for Hall H, because I think that's the only way I'm getting in. Safety first, no Canada first. So we are in line at Hall H. It's not a huge, huge line, but uh, there might not be people moving out of the room, so we'll see. have to see how how much this line moves, but we're hoping to make it for Hateful Eight. We got an hour. Oh my gosh, we're going in. So we're walking. Well, we stopped, hold on. We may have spoke too soon, but we moved. Yeah, I think and we're we just, next. We compressed, we compressed. We're next. All right, so after waiting, what, two, two and a half hours? Two and a half hours. About two and a half hours, we are finally going into Hall H, just in time for legendary pictures. Hopefully we'll see Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. A little bit about Crimson Peak and why you wanted to make it and why you thought it was important to, to tell. Well, I, I wanted to create a, a really classical, lush, uh, lavish, gothic romance. You know, it hasn't been done in a while and it's, they're always female-centric movies that have very strong protagonists. I have two daughters that are incredibly strong <laughs> and, and my wife is my high school sweetheart. Was incredibly strong. <laughs> Many times in some of these movies, the girl ends up being a damsel in distress, and I wanted to create a tale that was a classical gothic romance. Don't expect a reinvention when at the end it turns out that the house was a spaceship and it was an experiment about nothing. Or it's all a studio and they're shooting a TV show, nothing. It's a straight gothic romance, but uh, with certain twists are a little more gender liberating, shall we say. And they are, they, are, they are a little more about being yourself and stuff like that. But that, that we stop. I'm, I'm incredibly conscious about this with two daughters. We, are, we live in a world that is a, there is a secret gender war. And we, we have to, as a storyteller, it's our duty to take these great genres and great forms and retell them a little in that conscious way. I wanted it to be scary, and I wanted it to be gorgeous. And I think it's a movie, it's one of my three favorite movies I've done, and this, in my opinion, you don't have to agree, is the most beautiful movie I have made. Star de poca madre! I'm very excited to see uh, Mia Wasikowska, Tom Hiddleston, Jessica Chastain! European folklore, and essentially he's the dark Santa Claus. Welcome! Welcome to Hall H! I'm a virgin here. I've never been to Comic Con before. This is a big oh. Don't worry, we will be gentle. And I'm a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> now with that sexy hair, you're not Adam Scott, you delightful looking right. son of a bitch. Um, first of all, uh, this, to me, this feels
feel so much of movies that I loved when I was a kid. Obviously, there's it yeah, seems super so. messed up, and there's adult themes. But what, starting with you, Tony, how was it presented to you? Did you read the script? Did you sit down with Michael? And how did you get involved? I was sent the script and a very impressive package about how the world would look and how it would unfold. And who Krampus was? I didn't know who Krampus was. I'd never heard of this evil nemesis of Santa Claus. Um, and uh, I read the script and I was so kind of impressed because it, it so wonderfully blended a lot of different genres because it looks like a very scary movie and believe me, it's horrifying, but <laughs> it is very funny. For the first half an hour, it feels like a couple of dysfunctional families in a John Hughes comedy. Before I read the script, uh, Mike wanted me to sit down with him so he could sort of explain the world before I read the script, which, it, which I think was a good idea because it was called Krampus. So he wanted to just sort of explain it. And I'm so glad we did that because we just started, we just sat and talked about Amblin movies for like two hours. We talked about Gremlins and Goonies and Poltergeist and I went home after this meeting and just watched Poltergeist in the middle of the afternoon because I realized I hadn't seen it in, I don't know, 20 years or something. And was... <laughs> What? That's pretty good. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. is excellent. <laughs> I just peed myself because that brought it all back. Um, and I was just so impressed by, yes, how scary it was, but how character-driven it was, and how funny it was. And and that's what Mike was going for. And then I read the script and was just impressed by how much he's kind of carrying the torch of those sort of character-driven kind of horror films from the 80s that everybody could enjoy. Um, and all the practical effect. I mean, Weta did all of the creatures for this movie. Yeah, we're very practical. Lots of monsters on set for these guys uh, to deal with. I got to attack Tony with a puppet, which was probably one of my favorite parts of the process. Oh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, then we saw some footage from Warcraft, and that looks pretty awesome. Then there was the uh, Women Who Kick Ass panel, which had Haley Atwell, uh, Brienne from Game of Thrones, there was Kathy Bates. Um, There's a lot of women who kick ass. And then uh, following that was the Joss Whedon panel, which uh, was very entertaining. And he announced his new uh, comic book, which comes out next year, called Twist, which sounds pretty interesting. He, I think he described it as uh, if there was a Batman female character in Victorian England, uh, if I'm remembering right, now... You know, we'll go walk the floor some more. Wait. What? You forgot to say what I've been doing. What have you been doing, Katie? I've been patiently waiting in line to score Ben uh, a Ant-Man variant Mondo poster. Yeah. 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 And I got it. And she got it. I told him I didn't get it. She tricked me. She said she didn't get it. But I got it. Why, you little. <laughs> I waited three hours. See this face? <laughs> this is what it looks like to have a really great girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I did spend 92 of your dollars, though. <laughs> so they're like... Katie saw Elijah Wood. Yeah, right next to me. That's cool. Yeah. I was about to try to speak talk him, but he walked away. I was just going to tell him that my boyfriend has prettier eyes than him. That's right. Duh. That's right, Elijah Wood. You watching this? Got prettier eyes. Greetings from Tromaville. We're here with Monster Popcorn, the best amazing wisdom entertainment. The Toxic Avenger eats monster popcorn and 
uh, with Drano, and uh, thank you, Mo Monster Popcorn. <laughs> there would be no trauma entertainment without Monster Popcorn. <laughs> and the Tide Sinker Band. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you Thanks. So, uh, day three is day three of the con is over, and we are headed to uh, Balboa Theater to go see the Nerdist podcast live. What he said.